Hello and welcome to the A3 Football Show. We're doing another episode of Fix Your Club and today we're looking at Tottenham Hotspur. So, cast your head back to the end of last season. And I say that in particular this club because quite a lot has happened already this summer for Tottenham. But where did you consider Tottenham to be at the end of the season? Finished fourth on the final day. Um, obviously, Antonio Conte as the manager for you know most of you know for the second half of the season and just before that, where did you see the club? Yeah, so you know they finished fourth, uh, a bit almost by default. You know, <laughs> Arsenal bottled it as per usual, and Man United just for you know just went up to it this season. Terrible. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I still thought. Uh, a few changes are needed in their team if they want to maintain that uh, top four position. Uh, yeah, or, or and do anything in the Champions League, and they have done that. They have, you know, they have exceeded my expectations in the transfer window. In my, uh, yeah, so what was their first mm-hmm. signing? Yeah, I think so. They started off this summer with Perisic coming from Inter Milan. What do you think of that signing? Yeah, you know, he he, he was very good last season playing left wing back and. You know, Conte knows him well. Uh, when he was at Inter, he was playing left wing back under him as well. And yeah, he's you know Tottenham. I feel like they needed to improve there. Conte didn't seem too sure about his current options there with Sessegnon and Regulon. And yeah, so that's a good sign. A nice, experienced player. Yeah, I I think he suits that position so well. I think he's one of those players who might have had an even more successful career if he'd had the opportunity to play. At, le- in, at left wing back for a big team for a long time mm. it just suits him so perfectly you know the, the, his crossing ability his dribbling ability his, how vertical he is yeah it, it, it's perfect for him I think and he, even though he's 33 I think he, he adds a lot to their team so okay. I agree with you there and it was a free transfer so yeah. there's really not any risk <laughs> with the transfer exactly exactly then they followed that up with the sign of Yves Basuma from Brighton. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How they, how they managed to pull this one off is beyond me. I, I just don't see how clubs with, you know, with higher pool haven't signed, hasn't signed between already. Clubs like Man United. Arsenal been linked with him for over a year and decided, well, they must have decided to go to go against uh, signing Basuma, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. What a player. I mean, in my opinion, my opinion, he's world class, and we're all gonna see that this season. We're all gonna see that this season. While he's playing in the Champions League, playing for Tottenham, and the difference that he's gonna make to this Tottenham team, oof, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. I'm, I'm very intrigued to watch Tottenham this season. Very yeah, intrigued. I think it's a huge signing too. Been one of my favorite players for a while now. I think the he's a he's a big upgrade onto what they had. Not that, you know, Heisberg or Skip are terrible players, but it's a huge upgrade. It's, it just it, it yeah. takes them to another level there. Um, there's levels to this. There's yeah. levels in this game. Yeah. And the Sumo's all class Heisberg and Skip they're they're just nowhere near all yeah. class. Man. I yeah, I think he could have a good partnership with um uh Bentoncourt, who had a good good six months after he joined. For thirty million pounds as well. Thirty million, I think he's what, why like twenty-five Roma, million. Why yeah. weren't Real Madrid after him? Real Madrid, Paris Saint Germain. All these teams should have been after Yves Basuma. Ah, yeah. oh, these clubs and their scouting systems. I just, I just don't know what they're doing. Honestly, I don't know what these clubs, what these club scouts are being paid for. Yeah. It's a great signing by Tottenham. It really is. Um, um, after that, they've uh, well they they signed uh, Fraser Forster on a free transfer as a number two goalkeeper fine yeah, solid choice solid yeah. choice um they've then spent 50 million pounds rising to 60 million on Richarlison what do you make of that so obviously with Bergwijn leaving to Ajax for was it 30 million pounds or euros 30 million uh you know, Bergman, I, I rate Bergman. I think he's a, you know, he's a very good option to have, which they did have last season. He came on, made an impact a couple times. But 
Yeah, so they needed to replace him. They still have Lucas Moura as an option as well. Or Charlison as a backup. And he can play across all three uh, of the forward positions. We all, we all know how good Richardson can be. And I think his skill set, you know, he's strong, he's fast. That's exactly what Conte wants as well. He wants players who are strong and fast to come off the bench and make that impact, to, direct, to run at the defenders. That's And that's what Richardson loves to do. He loves to take on defenders. And yeah, I think Conte's going to love him. And uh, he's not far from the likes of Son and Kulusevski, in my opinion, in terms of ability. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a perfect uh, fourth choice attacker. I have to agree with you there. I think for the first time you're going to look at Spurs now, and say it's a big game and Harry Kane's not available, right? He's been staying fit more recently anyway. But let's say he's not available and you're up against. Kulisevsky, Richardson, and Son as a front three is still really good. <laughs> you're still, really you're still good. worried. You still have a lot to that you're gonna have to deal with, and that's you know that's gonna be the big difference. There's also five subs being introduced into the Premier League this season, so you can be pretty sure every single game he's fit, he's gonna play. Uh, it's in some way, you know, it, whether whether he's starting that many games or not, he will play. And of, and of course. Uh, they're in the Champions League so a lot of important games for for Spurs this season I think that could be a, another big signing and just like the Bissouma signing I don't think they could have done any better you know you look at the market that's, as pr- that's pretty much as good a signing as Spurs could make for what they were looking for yeah you know if, if we look at other alternatives we will have moved uh, Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal yeah no, Would uh, he have been willing to come and not be guaranteed a place in the starting lineup? That's the question. Probably not. Yeah, the reason he's leaving Man City is sounds that guaranteed spot, yeah. right? So uh, you know, Rafinha is looking to leave, but we've seen that he's not even interested in a move to Chelsea, mm-hmm. let alone Arsenal. Yeah, and because he's trying to move to Barcelona, so that might not have been possible, anyways. And yeah, and for, just for a sure, a sure thing, Richarlison is the best option. Got to agree with you there. Um, they've also very recently finalised a loan deal for Clement Longley from uh, Barcelona. What do you think of that? That's a good sign, you know, um, whether he's going to play in the middle of the back three or on the left of the back three. You know, th- those are probably two weak areas in the team. And, you know, he- he's- he'll be an upgrade on Eric Dyer for sure. Eric Dyer, is, you know, let's be real, he's not a very good player. And Tottenham some... fans, I've, I've seen a lot of them who say that he enjoyed a, a really good season last season. <laughs> yeah, and... yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> just just like some United fans rate Victor Lindelof, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah. Um... It's, it's, I think with Dyer, it's the fact that he was in the middle of that back three and he's okay when he's protected like that right yeah. he's yeah, yeah. That, i mean it's, it's hard to make mistakes when you're in the middle of a back three uh secured by two defensive minded midfielders it's very difficult to make this to make mistakes but yeah uh but yeah we know that is not he's not a great player so long lay would be a better option in the middle of the back three in my opinion mm. and yeah so, so yeah i mean that's a lot of business already we're still <clears throat> plenty to go in the transfer window and the reports say that Spurs have quite a hefty budget this summer. So now thinking about where else Spurs need to add, what else do they need, in your opinion? Uh, you know, they need a right wing back and a left centre back, in my opinion. Uh, a right wing back, we've seen them linked to Jed Spence. You're seeing that that's close to being uh, finalised for £15 million. Pounds. Uh, yeah, that's a good signing. You know, he's a nice uh, direct uh, wing-back. We've seen him last season for Nottingham Forest. In the FA Cup, what he did to Arsenal, you know. He's a good player, you know. Uh, he's young as well. Re- uh, room for improvement. But yeah, he you know, he's good at all the basics uh, that are needed for a wing-back uh, in the con- in Conte system as well. And he's, he's only going to get better, so... Yeah, yeah, good signing for Tottenham. I agree with you there. A really powerful runner. He's good technically. I think 
Yeah, he'll really grow. And he's, he's a huge improvement on what they had. That's the key. That was probably the weakest position in their team last season. Because Emerson, if anything, he's a perfectly fine, solid defensive fullback. Or, with you know, he's okay at the very best going forward. He's not a wingback. Matt Doherty is a wingback, but he's just not very good. So, you know, it helps them a lot. Yeah. And as a left centre-back... Left centre-back, I think the, their perfect signing would be the English-born, I believe, Nigerian left-back, who currently at uh, Rangers, played centre-back a lot as well this season, Calvin Bassey. Oh, interesting. I think his skill set is... is Perfectly suited for the left centre back role in Conte's system as well. Very good pass of the ball. One of the most solid defenders in Europe, in my opinion. Well, not many players are getting past him. He he, he will upgrade that uh, that team a lot, in my opinion. And if they manage to sign him and everyone can stay fit, I think that's a certified top three position. Wow, I mean, that's. A real, you know, interesting shot. It's quite, quite left field, and I, I think I agree with you. It's, you know, from what I've seen of him, he has everything that would be suited to that role. He can help progress the ball, which is, you know, it's it's important when you're when you're playing a back five system throughout a whole season. You're gonna need your centre backs to play more of an active role in build up then. Say necessarily in, in a, you know when you, with your normal four at the back formations, so yeah, I think I think he could be really key. I think on the other side they've got Romero, who's more of a you know standard defender, one yeah, old school, old oh, school yeah, defender, yeah. defender's defender, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, British fans love him, you know. Exactly. That type of defender yeah. gets stuck in, get stuck in. <laughs> you know. Might get a few red cards. Yeah. So it's all a vibe, written in. <laughs> exactly. So I think you really, it's really even more important to balance out having someone who's going to progress it on the on the other side. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So yeah, and and looking at what their team would be at that point, then you know. So just briefly, a starting eleven looking like Loris Romero Longley. Bassi, Spence, um, Bissouma, Bentancur, Perisic, Kulisevsky, Kane and Son. You think that's a third place finish? I mean, did we see this? Did we see this coming two years ago? No, no, no. Did we really see I Tottenham thought, being, a, being at this? Over. I have to be honest. You know, I not you ask you say two years ago. Ask me this time last year. Yeah, honestly. It, yeah, th- this time eight months, I mean, nine months ago maybe when Nuno was in charge. Oh, I was, God. you know, I was like, that's one less team to to worry about. As what a, what Conte has know, done fan. in this? What Conte has done in this small face of time is amazing. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, yeah it's, honestly. It's, it's remarkable. Honestly. The hit rate. Oh god! Of successful decisions, everything. Some of these decisions were controversial, you know. There were there were players that I know a lot of Spurs fans rated, like Lo Celso or Carlos Gill. You just get rid, of, you know, people like Endombele, who he loaned out. Um, what's what's your uh, stance on Endombele? Do you think they should keep him, or do you think they should try and sell? I actually think they should keep him, and I actually think the, the signings they made this summer that there's a real useful role for him in the squad. I don't I don't think he should or needs to play every game. And I think he'd have limited options to, to go to a club as good as Tottenham at the moment if he's going to start and you know I'm I'm assuming he's on considerable wages at the moment as well. So I think he'd be happy to take a squad role where you use him when you want to change to have a three man midfield. Because there will be times with Conte, you know, bigger games, etc., where he doesn't want to have this the front three. We know it with him. And Kulisevsky is someone who can actually play in that, I think, as the more advanced midfielder if necessary, so if you want to change up a bit. But if you want three midfielders, because he'd have people like Bissouma, um, Bentancur, Hoiberg, um, young Pape Matassa, who's Ooh. coming into their squad. Um, this Dark season. horse, that one. Yeah, yeah. A lot of potential there. You know, if that is your midfield options, you have a lot of flexibility for different types of games, different types of match situations. And again, 
as well as with Mr. Richarlison. He could be a good option for changing the type of the state of a game off the bench. You know, he could be really important. So I think I think he could he could have a huge season. He could still prove his worth to Spurs. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so, so maybe Spurs should have a look at him and and think about yeah. keeping him yeah. rather than selling him. Uh, I think they they could still sell a few other players as well. You know, Regulon they probably don't need any more, as well as you know Lo Celso. So there's more money to 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 be spent. So they can really they can really spend. Is there anything else you see that Spurs would need apart from the wing back and centre back? Honestly, really. they've done brilliantly well in this transfer window. Yeah, uh, there's uh, yeah, yeah. The attack sorted, the defence will be sorted. Yeah, the midfield, sorted. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what more do you want, right? Yeah. So what? Impressive. So, yeah, that that's that eleven can compete any team in the world. Any team in the world. Yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe not Man City. Yeah, yeah. Team. yeah. I mean, they'll give everyone a good game oh, for definitely. sure. And with when Conte is your manager, you know, you're in it. You're in most games anyway. I'm to excited fair. to watch them in the Champions League this season yeah. and the league. Honestly, it'll be interesting. Yeah, but um, um, going back to um, you said uh, controversial views on some of the Tottenham fans. Uh, you know, where you're referring to, you know, they weren't too sure about. You know, saying it's like uh, Ben Tanker and Kulisewski. Yeah. I don't really understand why they weren't yeah. sure. I found it so weird on on uh, transfer deadline day in January, w- watching the Spurs fans comment saying, "Oh, this, what a disappointing window." I think they were linked at the time with Adam Traore and Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz is a really good player, to be fair, but. To be honest, who was a, a more of a perfect fit and a, what Spurs needed at that point? Dejan Kulisevsky, you could argue, was the best player in the world they could have signed for what they needed. Yeah. To play with Kane and Son, and what a start he's made. He's th- this, is a, this is a player who's going to be world-class. With no injuries, I don't have any doubts. Anyone who knew about Kulisevsky and had watched him play in Italy knew that that's, that, that was a sure thing signing, that, that signing... You know that yeah. he, he was gonna be good in the Premier League. I think what happened was he wasn't playing regularly at Juventus. That made people think, well, oh, he's a Juventus flop. We're getting uh, as a Spurs fan, the castaways from Juventus who aren't good enough to make at Juventus in Ben and Colin Kulisewski. That's you know, it's. It, football fans need to stop putting so much value in the opinions of of some of these coaches. Yeah, managers. these coaches, these fans, these these other teams. It's you know, you look at Manchester United this last season. If you take what you saw as gospel for what all of those players in that dressing room were, oh, nobody in that team is good. Yeah, you know, but it doesn't make sense. As a football fan, you should be able to say, okay. Something is not working here, and this is affecting the players in the system. And maybe I should take that into account when I'm judging um, the quality and the suitability of a player. You know, so yeah, they've they've you know they've all their signings so far have come good. Very positive looking for this season. What? So you say they could, they're aiming for top four for sure. They they could maybe even finish third. Champions League run as well, yeah, yeah. Why not? You know, why not? I think I think they could go far in the Champions League. Honestly, uh, yeah, I, I could see it. I wouldn't put it past them. To be fair, all looking very positive for Spurs. I ha- one question I have for you: How far and what would they need? Not necessarily this season, but to go to the next level to ch- start ch- really challenging Manchester City and Liverpool. Let's assume all of the signings you, you put to, on the table are done for this season and they have a good season now. Go Looking ahead in 12 months, what would they be aiming for to take the team to the next level? I would say probably um, more competition for like a Jed Spence, maybe an improvement on Jed Spence, looking at uh, you know guys like Tariq Lamptey, uh, yeah, Tyrell Lamptey will probably be my first choice if I was Tottenham manager. That's a great shout. I think he's. I don't think he would have been available this summer, but in a year when, yeah, if everything goes to plan, you're still in the Champions League. I think that's an attractive move for him to get to play in that position. Yeah, um, probably also improve on 
uh, Ben Tanko in the starting uh, as a starting option. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, honestly, I think Papessa another season. This guy will be ready to to be a star uh, for Spurs. I think he's prote- he's potentially a world class midfielder. Wow. Yeah, I I could I would love that and a, a balance with him and uh, Basuma. Yeah. Yeah, that could be really that really impressive. Maybe if I was to throw a suggestion, a centre back as well, right? Long lays here on loan. Um, good signing, you know. Uh, not wanting to spend much, but maybe an improvement on him looking at the central centre back and then looking at the team at that point. Uh, mean, you know, yeah, you have I, any names in mind? I think a good signing for that position would be Tapsoba from Leverkusen. I think he'd fit them perfectly. I think that role would suit him perfectly. And with um, Having one v one defender, let's assume they did sign Calvin Bassi. Um, having one v one defenders like him and Romero either side, and then a a passer and someone that's composed as taps over in the middle. That's a great balance. It, it, yeah, it's scary. It, it, yeah, scary, you're you're, you're starting to look at a really complete team at that yeah, point, right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe just to throw another, maybe another goalkeeper because Hugo Lloris is quite old at this point. He'll be thirty seven in in a year's time, so maybe start looking there as well but that that would be affordable we haven't yeah. said so we, we've said what three or four players maybe a left wing back as well because of the Paris yeah, yeah, is again, quite old. you gotta see how, how that develops this season yeah. yeah very you know very promising stuff for Spurs I think yeah, I think Spurs fans <laughs> ought to be very yeah. excited it's yeah. a very exciting time for Spurs fans so yeah that first trophy is coming it's coming I, I can I can feel it honestly um, mm. yeah I mean, it's it's worked out well for Harry Kane in the end, right? It's it's worked out okay, yeah. It's worked out think, okay. I don't know about okay. well, but it's worked out okay. Do, do you think at the end of his career he'll be saying, "Okay, this was a successful Tottenham career," or do you think he'll have loads of regrets if you're making a video? If if Conte stays for the next two, three seasons at least, then yes, I think Harry Kane will be able to retire with his head held high. Let's see, because I I believe they will win. Major trophies yeah. under Conte. Well, you heard it. You heard it here first. Okay, that was the episode on Tottenham. See you next time.